everybody and welcome to this particular lesson which is going to be focusing on axis control lists. Now our ACLs are something that we can utilize within our Cisco IOS to identify a certain type of traffic and we really have a variety of access lists. We have two main flavors. We have standard and we have extended. Um, the whole purpose of creating these access lists is to do things like let's grab or identify a certain type of traffic and then what we end up doing with that access list can vary. Uh, we can utilize those access lists for network address translation. We can utilize them for things like route maps or if we just want to apply them onto an interface to either permit or deny certain types of traffic, we can certainly do that as well. So. That's really what we're going to be focusing in on with our ACL conversation today. Now, I just want to take it um, to the very basics. Let's just talk about standard ACLs. So technically we have uh, standard and we also have extended and our extended ACLs can get more specific, more granular. Um, now the functionality of the ACL, whether it's standard or extended, still kind of works the same. We're going to have one ACL, one access control list to identify different types of traffic. Uh, we can identify that traffic with permit and deny statements. So this one ACL, maybe it's ACL number one, it can have multiple different entries and those entries will be permit and deny statements. Permit means go ahead and allow it through. Deny means block it. So when we specify these statements in a standard ACL, we are only looking at source IP address. So when we think about that layer three header, we have a source and a destination IP address. We're only going to be looking at source address. Now, once we start getting into the extended, we can look at source and destination and all sorts of other cool stuff. Um, after all that traffic has been identified, a variety of actions can be taken. So we can leverage that ACL, like I said, for things like network address translation, or maybe if we're doing something like VPN, we can grab a certain flow of traffic and say, let's go ahead and pop this into our VPN configuration. Uh, ACLs can be used on routers and switches and actually when you guys progress your study you'll learn about different types of ACLs like even VLAN ACLs and uh, port access control lists so they can get pretty fancy. Now one of the things we also need to remember with our access control lists is that these are going to be reading from the top down. All right, so just like we would when we're reading a book. So when we do have multiple entries in one single access control list, uh, we are going to just read from the top down and the first entry that our parameters meet, let's say I have a IP address of uh, 10111 and this access list is permitting anything from the 101 whatever subnet my IP would certainly match that entry if it didn't match that entry then it would go down to the next entry until of course we'd get to the end now we have uh, let's say multiple permits and maybe some multiple deny statements that we have listed as different entries in this ACL. Now we have to remember there's always going to be an implicit deny or a deny at the end. So if we're permitting different types of traffic, maybe uh, we are indeed permitting that 10.1.1 subnet and then maybe we're denying like the 192.168 subnet um, we need to remember that at the end, we're always going to have this implicit deny. So if we apply it to an interface and we've allowed, let's say, only this subnet to go through, then that's going to be the only traffic that goes through unless we have some type of permit statement at the end to kind of catch everything. If we do want to allow everything to eventually go through that interface, we should put an IP permit any at the end that allows any other traffic 
to go through that interface. Now, another thing, let me pull up another whiteboard. Um, another thing that also makes uh, access control lists a little bit different um, is the configuration of the wildcard mask. If I wanted to match an entry on a slash 24, I wouldn't normally in my access list use 255.255.255.0 as my subnet mask because what access lists use are called wildcard masks. Those wildcard masks are inverted. So a wildcard mask is an inverted mask. In other words, Normally, our traditional masks say the ones are the bits that I care about and the zeros are the bits that I don't care about. The ones basically match my network portion and my zeros match my uh, host portion. Well, with the wildcard mask, it's the other way around. This time, the zeros are the I care bits or we're matching on zeros. So instead of a 255.255.255.0 mask looking like that. When we provision an ACL, we have to invert it. So what we would do is, little trick here, just subtract whatever your mask is from all 255s. That will give you your inverted mask. So 255 from 255 is zero. zero 0 0.255. This is the equivalent of a slash 24 when you're provisioning something like an access control list. Now in my next video, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the steps of actually configuring something like a standard ACL on a Cisco router. We're going to test it, see how it works once we've applied it to an interface. And then we'll come up with uh, some additional videos for some of our extended ACLs.